Hey, my first guest here from my house is uh, the Democratic mayor of Los Angeles, and boy, am I glad we have one of those. Please welcome Mayor Eric Garcetti. They're clapping at home, I'm sure, for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much for being here with me today, or remotely you, with me here today. I wanted to have you on the show for a long time. I wish it could have been under happier circumstances, but I guess the good news for Los Angeles is you were the one of the, one of the first to uh, give a stay-at-home order, and that seems to have worked. Uh, I guess my first question is, because we were first doing that, might we be <laughs> one of the first to end it? Well, I've said that the more quickly people do things, the shorter this will last, and the slower that they do things, the longer it will last. So it could be, but we also were um, not as far into the infection as other parts of the country, like on the East Coast. So it remains to be seen. We're about... 14 to 17 days kind of behind our calendar of where New York is. We implemented these things earlier, so I'm hoping that throughout California, the first state to do this, that we will be able to get back to work and back uh, out of the cave, as it were, sooner. But uh, we're going to wait for public health professionals to tell us, and it, it, we should expect it to be a couple months. And, uh, and as our civic vice principal on this, uh, what sort of grade would you give uh, Angelinos for following the order? I would say it's a solid B right now. Uh, we got an A actually in uh, one of these groups that grades how much our cell phones move. So if people are sneaking out, they're at least keeping their cell phones at home because it showed that we had been the county moving the least here in Southern California and throughout the country. But, you know, we see slippage of that. And I, I think that there's always folks that are looking to get to the beach. We had to close that down, get out to the trails. And I understand it. These are the iconic locations and places we love to be. But this really is about that discipline of a couple weeks and reminding people when you move, you could kill yourself and you could certainly kill somebody else. So unless it's necessary, unless you're a critical worker, stay at home. Well, the last I read, there was 8,000 cases in a state of 40 million people. Now, obviously, that's going to go up because we're entering that phase now where those numbers are going to rise. Um, how are we doing with hospitals, masks, ventilators, equipment? Well, you know, we are about 11 days behind New York City in terms of fatalities per capita in L.A. County, maybe 14 days behind the number of cases, but they've had more tests there. Um, we're doing okay. We're holding uh, steady, and I hope that our stay-at-home orders gives us an extra week or two that other places wouldn't have, but every city has to be prepared for when the cases are going to hit your capacity. And just to put it in perspective, we have, um, you know, about 22,000 beds uh, total in all of our hospitals that are our general emergency room hospitals, and of those, we're having only about 13 or 14, 1,500 of them available right now, only a couple hundred ICU beds. So these hospitals are already about 90% filled, 95% filled before the onslaught. Now they're building capacity, they're moving beds around, they're changing rooms that didn't have ventilators. We've got about um, a little bit under a thousand ventilators unused right now, prepared for when folks come. But we're going to hit that that uh, that wall, whether it's in two weeks or three weeks. Uh, we are, you know, confident every city will go through that. We're just trying to do our best to save as many lives as possible. We're, I, do we have enough masks? Uh, I, I know that there has been conflicting information, even from the CDC, about how effective they are. Um, they have sometimes made us feel like they're not that effective. I think it's got to be somewhat more effective than nothing. Oh. And I've heard other people, I think yourself, say, even if it's a, a bandana, which worries me in L.A., because if I wear the red one <laughs> and then I'm out where the Crips are, the blood Don't are, wear a red or a blue I'm, one, please. I'm, I'm really screwed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, look, the, the, these things like this, which are different than masks, I mean, they are what we call masks, but they're not medical grade masks. We have about 5 million of these that cloth companies here in Los Angeles uh, have already started to, to make that they think they can make about 5 million a week. Um, the metaphor is like that, you know, football player might be smaller than the door. That's the virus. And the door is the right. size of the pores in this. But if you have five or six football players trying to rush through at the same time, it actually can help droplets not spread and save our grocery clerks, uh, save folks that are doing our critical work. So I'm a big believer in them. I keep waiting for national guidance. We might hear it very soon. I've, I, I just heard before coming in here, maybe the president, by the time this gets uh, shown, will have said it as well. 
And those countries like Czech Republic and Korea and other places, Taiwan, that have them have shown a slower rate of growth. So it's important, though, to remember that's different than the surgical and the uh, medical grade masks that we need. There aren't enough of those. We're still holding on. We've got sometimes a, a week or so of supplies. I've deputized the head of our port of Los Angeles, which is the biggest port anywhere in the Americas, to be our chief logistics officer. And so we're looking at supply chains and companies and chasing down every lead to order for our hospitals. So hospitals don't have to compete with each other. Cities don't have to compete with each other. States don't have to compete with the federal government. It's a mess out there. Uh, but you know, right now we're holding on, but it's week to week is the honest answer. You mentioned the uh, president. Uh, I imagine it is a Hobson's choice as an elected official, especially in California, not his favorite state, because as you know, uh, he would have won the popular vote if not for all the illegal voters here. <laughs> uh, so but it. it's a tough choice for a guy like you, because on the one hand, <clears throat> you want to tell the truth. On the other hand, if you say anything critical, this president has shown that he will deny essential services and equipment to states that aren't nice enough to him. So I guess what I'm asking you is, uh, how are your praising skills when you need them for this president? Well, first of all, Bill, I think you're doing a great job. You're the best, <laughs> you know, there is on television, bar none. Good. Um, but seriously, you know, I'll, I'll say thanks to anybody. The, I'll work with the president before this happened. I was working with Ben Carson, his Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, even though some of my Democratic friends said don't, when it comes to homelessness, because he had a genuine heart about it. He was willing to listen, and we've been working together. Same thing with this president when it came to the U.S. Naval Ship Mercy. Uh, he brought it. I said, thank you. I talked to folks in the White House just days before, part of what I hope uh, helped bring it here. Uh, but I also won't be shy about criticizing what we don't have at the national level. We don't have the preparation for this. We need to prepare for the second spike of this when it comes in the late fall or the early winter. We've got to use all the resources of the federal government better. And I'm a big federalist. I love that here in California, we have states' rights. We can go our own way, whether it's on immigration, the environment environment, other things. But federalism depends on the central government doing some of the most important things like defending our country with wars, foreign policy, international trade, and certainly a pandemic response would fit into that. I'd like to see much more assertive leadership, much more national standards, much earlier adoption. I'm glad he's now saying that the whole country should do this. Uh, but I got on a phone call with about 300 fellow mayors two weeks ago, just after we had done this. And I said, do it now. I don't care if you don't have one single case, it's coming. And the way the media reported this is that it was kind of coastal. That allowed it to become a democratic or blue state right. thing. You know, just a, a week and a half ago, I was looking, Wyoming had the same infection rate as LA. So did North Dakota. You know, it, it was just per capita. People weren't looking at it. They were looking at absolute numbers. So this is coming to your town no matter what. And we need national leadership on procurement, on testing, on standards, and on advice. Well, I think you did a good job on this so far. I wish you continued luck and all of us good luck. And uh, hopefully we won't have, here in California, we are the land of the sequels. Hopefully we won't have to be doing this again. Thank you yeah. so much, Mr. Mayor. Stre strength and love. I'll look forward to coming on after we yes, get through this Yes, we time. will see you in person soon, I hope. Thank you, sir. Yes, indeed. Take care.